Hey, we are. Are we all here? Hello. Let's see. It's working. Okay, my sound wasn't working before. Now it's working. Good morning, everybody. Knock, knock, knock. Who's out there? I'm going to let uh, some people get on in there. Vanessa Bonavente, how are you, my girl? How's the world of casting? If you have anything, uh, Vanessa's a casting director here in the group. If you guys have any questions for me for casting while I'm here, uh, we might be able to do a little you ask me, I ask her, or if there's anything I say, Vanessa, that you want to add to or whatever, you're welcome to. Hi, Jason Hilton. Thanks for joining. Jason is an incredible agent. If you guys are looking for representation, you want to check him out. He's hardworking. He cares about his clients, and he's really ambitious and, and a great agent, so look into him. Uh, hey, Vanessa. Did you have your baby, girl? Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy for you. So we're going to be talking about a lot of things today. Welcome back to five, of five Steps to Level Up Your Acting Career. Today we're going to be talking about how to get an agent or manager. Uh, Jason, I'm glad you're here. If there's anything you want to add, feel free to add. I'm going to try to cover as much as I possibly can um, to give actors a clear understanding of how to get an agent or manager. So we're just waiting for a few seconds for people to come in, and then when I hit about 50, uh, we're almost there, I will all start. And this will be on replay. You can watch it uh, at your leisure. We also send it out to our mailing list. If you want to have this sent to your inbox and your mailing list, just go to hollywoodwinnercircle.com, put in your address, your mailing address, and get on our mailing list for more useful trainings like this. Okie dokie. So I think I'll get started. Where are we at? Yep, we're about there. Okay, so happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I love a day where I have to do absolutely nothing. And this for me is not work. Even though this is work, this for me is complete pleasure and joy. I love doing these kind of trainings. So I don't feel like I'm having a work day, even though it is. I'm just excited to be here. I'm happy to answer your questions. And so what we're talking about today is how to network with agents and managers to get representation. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is get experience. Get experience and get training. No agent or manager wants an inexperienced actor who has no training and no experience. The only place that that is ever really applicable is children. With children, we see a cute kid that can speak and has good energy and can run around and, and, and have you know expressions. We can do things with that. They don't even have to have acting experience yet. We want to make sure they speak clearly and that they can learn how to look at the camera. And when they learn how to read, we want to make sure they can read text. And as they get older, they need to be able to break down scenes. But in the beginning, their natural energy is enough. So if you're not a child, the rest of this video applies to you. <laughs> so I get this question all the time. Um, what should I do first? Should I get an agent first or experience first? Uh, that should be a no-brainer. It's like saying to the doctor, um, do you want to operate on my father's brain first or do you want to go get experience and training first? Um, I'm okay with either one. Not. <laughs> so you got to understand experience and training come first at all times for adults. Experience and training comes first. Don't approach agents and managers without it because no one's going to be interested. We're just going to delete your, your, uh, your submissions. Am I wrong? Am I wrong, Jason? Um, a long time ago, Hollywood used to work in a very different way, okay? Hollywood would take actors and sign them to their seven-year picture deal and train them and groom them, and they'd have classes, and they'd have etiquette classes and speaking classes, and they would do all kinds of promotion and marketing and build the star. That is not how it works today. There are all these individual moving parts. Actors have to develop themselves to a certain point, and then agents and managers will be interested. So nobody is going to sign immediately just because you want to be an actor. And there's a lot of other people who want to be actors. So let's continue. I made a list of what I want to say to you. I'm just going to be reading some of it, but you know, I'm still presently talking to you, but I just want to make sure I don't. Um, 
So the bar is higher for adults, obviously, but you can do it. I mean, every agent, every agent and manager that signs adults is picking people that are qualified and that have experience and that have good resumes and headshots and, and acting clips. And that can be you too. You just have to do the work. This takes work. Um, so you want to, you want to focus on fleshing out your resume, meaning get acting classes on your resume and in your, your instrument but get them on your resume. We talked about that, and when we talk about that? Day five, uh, day three, we talked about um, what kind of classes you should take, et cetera. So go watch that video again, or go into the Hollywood Winter Circle for a complete list of recommendations on, on things you need to do to get five to 10 higher level credits. Um, don't just mail so let's get to the meat of it. Don't just mail your submission to 100 agents at once and, and BCC it or forget to BCC it or any of these kind of things and just splash everybody with your, with your submission. We don't like that. We know when you're doing it and it's not personal. It doesn't feel like you took the time and energy to actually figure out if you're actually good for a roster. One of the don'ts is when you say, you know, I've looked at your roster and I think I have a perfect fit. Especially when I used to represent kids a lot and I didn't have any adults and people would say that I'm like you didn't even look at my roster You don't even know I represent kids. So you don't lie, you know, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie um, Take a look like say Jason he's here in the group and I won't just keep pointing him out because other agents will pop in too. but go to Jason Hilton's page look at his his uh, list of clients see if you really fit his roster see the types of levels of actors he represents is he doing developmental or actors that have lots of credits you know figure out who you're talking to in this business and then talk specifically to them does that make sense my suggestion when you're looking for agents is go to something like uh, a show like Grey's Anatomy or NCIS and look at the actors that have very few credits like and see who represents them because they may start with newer people and that would be and then you you make a list of those people and then you get their email addresses and you specifically contact them but not in one giant BCC individually to their names okay not to who it may concern or dear miss or dear mister when you're contacting uh, an agent or manager you're obviously going to write a cover letter that cover letter has to contain certain things um, my first piece of advice is make it short and sweet. No one wants to read a book. It will put you at a disadvantage and they'll likely toss it out. As soon as they start to see it going on and on and on, they just, they just get rid of it. They know you're not a professional. Uh, professional actors re represent themselves like a business person. They also respect the time of agents and managers. And they know that we don't have all day to read a book uh, from 100 different submissions that week. So if you value your time, that will help you stand out. Value their time. The very number one don't I have for you is don't start it like, I've wanted to be an actor all my life. Uh, in my, all my dreams, and there is nothing I wouldn't do to become an actor. I promise if you just give me a chance, I will become a star. I will do better than anyone else. I will, I will, don't do any of that. It sounds desperate, it sounds pleading, we don't like it, we won't respond to it, it will be tossed in the trash. And understand that people say those kinds of things all the time, that they'll do whatever it takes, they'll work harder than everyone else, they promise they will never let us down, uh, it's not true. When we sign actors, we find out half of them let us down, don't do what we say, don't do, what we, what, don't do whatever it takes, don't show up for auditions, Etc. Etc. So all of those words are nonsense that we don't respect or listen to or value. I'm going to tell you what we do want to hear, but I'm going to tell you what we don't want to hear. So we don't want to hear that. Um, we all, we just don't want to hear emotional pleas. Sometimes you guys get confused and think because this is a business that no no, because this career deals with emotions and wearing your heart on your sleeve and being vulnerable, that's for the stage, that's for the screen. The people in the office, they are all business. 
So your cover letter cannot be a heartfelt, pleading, I'm emotional, I'm emotional, and this means so much to me, you just don't know. Cannot be that kind of letter because this is a business, and the office people are business people. So you've got to come at them like business people. And what do we want? Show us what you've been doing to work hard for your career. I've booked six short films, uh, three web series. I've had the lead in a film that went to festivals, and I won Best Actress in so-and-so. I'm training with so-and-so. Those are the kind of things we want to hear. Um, if you're SAG eligible, SAG after eligible, write that down. If you're in a theater production right now that's getting a lot of publicity, let us know. Um, if you're in new media projects and they're getting millions of views and they're going viral, let us know. Even if you've done some web series that aren't going viral, let us know the work you're doing. You don't have to list your entire resume. I don't think you have to list your entire resume um, from scratch because we can see that in the resume. But you do have to list the highlights, the highlights, okay? Add your links. Do not submit to an agent or manager without adding links to your actor's access and your casting networks or LA casting. We need to see right away if you can act. Literally, we want to see your type to see if we need your type and we need to see if you can act. So links on Actors Access, you should have footage already up there. You should also add links to your YouTube or Vimeo if that's where you also have links to your uh, clips or links to your reel. Don't give us anything we have to sign up for and download in order to review your package. We're not going to sign up for anything. We're not going to download anything. I speak for all agents and managers when I tell you these things. We're not downloading things to our computer that we don't know. We want links to, to sources we trust, like YouTube or video. That's really casting, okay? Um, do attach your resume as a PDF, not as a doc. When we open Docs, D-O-C or D-O-C-X, it comes out all over the place with your resume not formatted correctly. There's no columns. Everything's a mess. It's a mess. Do not send us that. Send us PDFs of your resume. If you don't know how to make a PDF, Google. Ask the Google. Google is your friend. Okay, you guys start thinking of questions that you might have for how to get an agent or manager. I'm going to try to cover it all in here, but there's always questions, and I love questions so much. All right. Do not submit to us without a headshot and resume. Does that sound like a no-brainer? That's not, because we get a lot of submissions with no headshot and no resume and no acting link. Problem. If you don't have acting link to us, you're not ready. We want to see if you can act. You're not ready if you don't have clips. Don't submit to us with bad clips. It's just going to tell us you're an amateur, you're green, and you're not ready. So we're just going to throw it in the trash. Don't submit to us with lousy headshots, with a tree in the background, or a lot of makeup, blurry, like an Olin Mills photo, like an Olin Mills portrait, with gloves and your hands on your face. Don't submit poor headshots. If you haven't learned what quality industry standard headshots are, don't submit. You're not ready. If you don't have training on your resume, you're not ready. If you've never done any theater or student films or short films that you can get on your own before you get an agent, you're not ready. We do not do all the work for you. We want actors that have put energy, gumption, uh, resourcefulness, who have been out there grinding on their own to get credits on their resume. I used to never look at actors that had less than 10 short films on their resume. I don't want amateurs. You know, I have, if I have developmental people on my roster, it's a fraction. Uh, for me, more than others, because I love that more than others. But typically, let me speak for other agents and managers that don't have a large developmental roster. We're looking for actors that have already developed to some extent. 
So they've got four or five web series and seven or eight short films and some bunch of student films already. They've already come with, they're not green on set. They know how to work in front of the camera. They have training. And now that's interesting. What, they're, what agency managers are really looking for are network television credits. So that's the number one secret I could give you. If you have network television credits, we're going to pay attention, especially if some of the actors on our roster don't have network television credits. Now, one way to get those credits, we talked about in, in videos before, is do workshops with casting directors. Get in there, start to get to know those casting directors, have them call you in directly, go in there and bang out a hell of a great audition, and let them call you in and you book those jobs on your own. If you do that, and then you have a co-star, we're going to open your resume, your, 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 uh, your submission with much more concern and interest than if you have no co-stars or guest stars. So just know, we look at people that are series regulars in the past, co-stars and guest stars, before we look at anybody else. Then if we're looking for people that don't have those credits, we're looking for people that are super, super talented, are tremendously funny, have hysterical clips, or really interesting character types, or just super strong actors that have delivered some content they're, they're seen in such a powerful and interesting and unique way that makes us stop and feel and pay attention. Your acting has to be stellar. We don't want amateurs. So that's why you have to take a couple of years to develop your skills, your resume, your clips and all that stuff before an agent or manager will really be interested or even really able to do anything for you. Because if you don't have great clips, there's not much we're going to do for you anyway. Here's another one of my clips, my tricks, I mean, another one of my tricks. If you have relationships with casting directors already, mention those. Mention those. So, for example, uh, if you are, I have a client that's auditioning for um, a Marvel movie on Monday. She is very excited. And she should be, because that's a very, very exciting thing. Um, the casting director, that should be someone that could, you know, if, she, if, this, if my client goes to producers or gets a call back, that's something that we could say, you know, my client, uh, blah, 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 I'm not going to say who, um, was brought to producers by Sarah Finn uh, for Marvel last week. Or so-and-so has been pinned for three commercials, uh, is on hold for an ABC pilot. Whenever you've been pinned, put on hold, um, brought to producers, or are getting callbacks, those are key words that agents and managers pay attention to. They go 10 times further. Those are the business words you need to know. They go 10 times further than, I love acting. It is my whole life. And we're glad it is because we all love actors. And it's our whole life too. Um, but we don't really want to hear that out of your mouth when you're trying to get us as a representative. We want to hear, I've been on four auditions last week. I was pinned for one, callbacks for two, and I booked one. We want to hear you're a booking, working actor. Because for us in the office, it's about making money. It is only about making money. The show belongs on the screen and on the stage. In the offices, in the production offices, they might be talking about the show concept and the colors and all these lovely things that are creative. But in an agent and manager's office, we're talking about money. And only money. Can you book the job? Can you close the, uh, the, the booking and make us money? Can you get to callbacks? Can you get to producer sessions? Can you go to network? Can you test? Can you make us money? As soon as possible. We want money. That's what agents and managers think. So if you want to be signed by an agent or manager, think about in your cover letter telling them how you can make them money. And I don't mean saying it. I can make you money. Prove it. I just booked uh, a co-star on this. I just booked a short film there. I just booked a lead in a feature that's flying me to South Carolina. If you're booking and our clients on our roster are not, we're going to swap them out. We're going to get rid of the ones that don't book and put actors that are booking in. There's something called in the mix, another business term you may or may not know, which is why I'm here to teach. In the mix means you've gotten through all of the 
you know, 3,000 people were submitted and you were selected to be one of the 100 that auditioned. You got through the first set of callbacks and now you're down into the producer sessions. You're in the mix. The people in the mix are the only ones that are really being considered for the job. Just because you had an audition doesn't mean you're really being considered for the job. In the mix means you are. You're on hold, you're being pinned, you're on a veil, you're in the mix, you have producers, you're testing. If you're testing, you're in the mix. Saying that in your cover letter is also a good buzzword we like to understand. We like to hear that. I'm being, I just tested for this, that, and the other. You see the difference between the powerful comments you can have and the weak ones that come from I'm feeling, I want, and I need, I need this more than anything in life itself. Skip all that. We don't care about that. Not interested. Okay, another way is if you've won a Best Actor Award or Best Actress Award in a film festival. I can see Joe Dane is here. Joe Dane is a, is a film producer. He produced a great movie years ago with one of my clients. That's all I'll say about that, right, Joe? <laughs> um, thanks, Ryan. I'll add that. Uh, if you have a, a movie with Joe, and Joe's an incredible producer, and he, you, his movies go to film festivals, and if you win Best Actor, that says you might be bankable. You might be marketable. Other people think you're marketable, too. So what Ryan Hayden, who's a great agent here, uh, in, uh, Ideal Talent Agent, uh, owns Ideal Talent Agency, uh, we want to know actors aren't delusional and actually get what they are. If you're ugly, cop to it. If your resume sucks, acknowledge, but give a good reason. Nothing worse than an actor who doesn't get it. Absolutely. Um, I did a consultation with an actor in New Zealand one day, and he said to me he wanted to be the next Harrison Ford. The guy was very, very unattractive. Never going to be Harrison Ford. Why? Harrison Ford is a leading man, and he's gorgeous. Um, drop dead gorgeous leading men and women are what most movies are built around and then everyone else are character actors sometimes character actors become the lead if they're extremely funny they're the leads um, sometimes an overweight funny character actor becomes the lead like Melissa McCarthy who's so beautiful really inside and out beautiful and she's also super talented dramatically comedically she's talent if an actor does not acknowledge their type and they think they're going to be a movie star and they are horrific looking, the chances of being a leading man or lady is, is so, it's, it's not going to happen. Right? I mean, it's like, I hate to say that, but people go to, I mean, unless you put yourself in the movie yourself, but if you look like the beast from Beauty and the Beast, those are the only roles you're going to play. The monster the villain, you're not going to play the leading male romantic lead. I mean, it's not going to happen. So you've got to know your type, what your limitations are, because you have limitations. Actors that are new think, I can play everything. Don't put that in your cover letter. I can play everything. We know you can't. It just tells us you're green and you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know the business. Make sure they're working links too. Thank you. Good point, Ryan. Ryan Hayden, make sure they're working links. Mail to an outside email to make sure everything comes through. 10% of all submissions are fucked up. Man, way more than that are fucked up, I tell you. So here's the thing. When you submit with those links, test them. Same when you're, when you're posting a representation Sunday here in the group. Test your links. If, we, if, if you've submitted to us with those links and, you, and they don't work, we're not going to go track you down and ask you if you could please send us the links. I mean, come on. We're busy. We're busy. Let's see if there's any more comments in here that I can apply. Okay, I'll get to questions. I guess I'm doing both. I'm reading and doing the same time. So let's see. Okay, and then the end of that, I suggest the next clear step. It's always good to end your very short cover letter with something like, if you think we could be a good fit, please contact me with a convenient time and location to meet. Or if you think I would be a fit for your roster, I would love to meet with you to discuss the possibility of representation. Include your current Contact information, your phone number, your email, put your website, your actor's access link, your LA casting link, your IMDB Pro link. Make it as easy as possible for an agent or manager to look you up and get right to whether they want to represent you or not or even consider it. Now let's talk about the follow-up. First of all, just because you submitted to an agent once doesn't mean you're going to get any kind of response whatsoever. 
Agents and managers are extremely busy. Sometimes we don't even get to your represent to your uh <laughs> all my words are messed up today. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet. That's why I haven't eaten yet. I'm actually doing something called Medifast. It's a shake with protein that replaces my meal and I haven't drank it. Mm. I need brain fuel. If you are submitting and we, you don't hear back from us anytime in the near future. We might not have even seen your submission. When I'm very, very, very busy, I just move all submissions over to a submission file. And when I have time, I'll look at it. If my roster is full, I might not look at it for months. If um, I don't need your type, I'll never respond, reach out and contact you. Most agents and managers won't. And then if I lose your type and I need your type again, I might go through that submission list and look for somebody that fits the types I'm looking for. Sometimes they're still available and don't have representation. Other times I missed it. So it, it often has nothing to do with you. I mean, if it's a bad cover letter, that has everything to do with you. But we, we pass by great talent all the time. We oversee great cover letters and, and, we just overlook them sometimes when we're too busy. If it's pilot season, it's not the right time to send it. We're not going to pay attention to it. If we're on vacation, there's just different times. The best time to send a cover letter asking for representation is after pilot season, which is like June, May, June, July. In the summer, we're replenishing our... Okay, too many people. Stop trying to reach me. Um, in the summer, we're replacing a lot of our clients because we go through something called drop season after pilot season. If people just didn't get called in, they didn't get callbacks, they didn't book anything, or you know, we just don't think we're going to be able to get them out. We've tried for a year or two, and we're just not getting anywhere with them, or we've asked them for their new materials, and they don't give them to us. We just drop them. Drop season. I've been known to drop 25, roster, 25 actors off my roster at the same time. You know, when I started coaching full-time, and managing less and less, I dropped 40 actors off my roster in a day. Now, if I wanted to start taking on new clients, and all of a sudden, I would have a lot of people I'd be interested in talking to. But I also, in mind, know what kind of actors I'm looking for. So most agents and managers have certain ideas in their mind about what they're looking for. So you might not be what they're looking for at the moment you submit, so submit again. Three months later, submit again. Three months later, tell that, act, uh, that agent that you booked a co-star that you've been workshopping, doing workshops, and these casting directors know you now. And you went out and you booked a lead in a feature film, and now you've won an award here. Stay in touch with them, because relationships are not built from one email. Relationships are built over time. Uh, okay, before I get to those questions, let me get to this. Let's see, you have to answer. Did to understand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a numbers game for you and for agents. It's a numbers game. So there's two possibilities after you send out the, co the cover letter. The res they'll respond, the representative will respond. And if they don't, just keep track. Make a spreadsheet. What agents did you submit to and when? Try reaching out to them again. Try reaching out to them quarterly. If you really want to be with a specific agent, like say I want to be with Ryan Hayden when I become an actor again. Uh, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna be watching the types of actors he's having success with. I'm gonna look at his um, IMDb Pro to see what kind of actors he signs. Um, I know Ryan is straight to the point. I've been paying attention to him in TMFA. He doesn't bullshit. He, I also know he's temperamental, and I also know that he works very hard for his agent and his uh, for his agency. And I also know he had um, over. I think he had one or two bookings per day every day this month for the last thirty days, because he's a hardworking actor and his clients book. So that's the kind of agent I'd want to be with. I'd want to kick the door in on that guy. So I'd start dating him business-wise. I'd be letting him know I'm doing workshops. I'd be letting him know I'm getting bookings. I would stay in touch with him throughout the year because I would let him know there's no other agent I want to sign with. He's the best. He's the right fit for me. And I'm going to prove to him through my efforts, through my bookings, that I'm the right fit for his company. Not through words. But you should, you should um, target, bullseye, the people you want to work with that you think will be a good fit for you. Don't just throw out 100 cover letters and take whoever gets back to you. I think you might do that on your very first agent, but after a while you realize that doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 
And if they never respond to you after a year of you really trying to court them, just go on to the next. They're just not interested in now. If they do respond, they'll say, yes, let's meet, or no, I don't think we're a good fit. If they say no, that's okay. Thank you for your time. Um, thank you for replying to my letter. And uh, ask if there's anyone they think might be a better fit. They might tell you. It's very common for agents and managers to send you to other people. I personally, when I don't want someone, um, I, I, I send them to other managers all the time. I don't know that that's just me. I think, Ryan, do you ever do that? I do that. If they give you a meeting, let's talk about what to do in the meeting. Let's say you have a meeting. Sometimes when they say not right now, that doesn't mean no. That doesn't mean no. So don't take not right now as a no. If they say not right now, they mean not right now. Get back to them in three months. Maybe then is the yes. So you've got a meeting. Congratulations. I'm excited. Here you go. Now you've got a meeting. It's your Remember, no legitimate agent or manager, like I've said, will ask you for money up front. That's not going to happen. And they're also going to meet you in their office somewhere by law. The agencies in California are required by law to have an agency building, office. They can't work from home. Managers can. Agents cannot. Um, so an agent should be meeting you in their office. Let's see. Yeah, agents and managers work on commission only, so keep it in mind when you're meeting with reps. That contract is very standard. Examples of representation contracts and a variety of other kinds of contracts in the Hollywood Winter Circle. So if you want to see what contracts look like before you start going in the agency's offices, get in the circle, you're going to learn everything. Um, so focus on discussing the work that you're doing. For the most part, treat your meeting like your letter. Keep it short and uh, be personable. Be yourself. Dress in a business professional way or a casual way. But it, don't, don't, if you're a goth biker chick, don't go in there in a business suit. It's not your type. You know, dress like you would dress, only be clean, right? Be clean, be sober, don't be high, don't be drunk. Um, be on time, which means early. Don't be late. Don't be, uh, don't go in there with an attitude. Like, I, you know, you, you, you know, you're lucky I met with you. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. The door hit you on the way in. <laughs> right? Be friendly. And focus on what you're doing. Again, like your cover letter. Do not talk about it. this has been my dream. I am so glad to be here. Thank you so much for letting me come. I've been dreaming about this my whole life. I just want to be an actor. I know I can do this. And none of that stuff. That means this is an amateur. They're green. Then you're going to do that in the casting office. Oh, God, no. We're never sending you anywhere. That means you're not ready for a representation. You're just not ready. Too green. You want to build rapport. So your first priority is to just be professional, be yourself. Be on time. Your second one is to build rapport. If you don't know what that is or how to build rapport, start watching every YouTube video you can about how to build rapport and read books about how to build rapport. Rapport is something that clicks between two people. And once rapport has clicked, all kinds of things are possible because a relationship is forming and there's a click between you two. You need that click. So learn how to build rapport with people. That needs to become one of your superpowers. And it can get you very, very far in this business or any business if you learn how to do that. So ask questions about themselves. That's one way to start the rapport. Ask questions about themselves. Don't be like, so what are you going to do for me as an agent? Uh, that's the kind of question that makes us shh. Let's laugh. Just laugh. You, what we're going to do as an agent, what all agents do, are take the materials you provide to us and submit them to casting and pitch you when the roles are right, negotiate the deal for you, close it, and collect your check and give you your percentage. That's what agents do. So that's a stupid question. What are you going to do for me? What can you do for me? 
It's more what can you do for us, <laughs> really. Like, do you have great headshots? Do you have great acting clips? Are all your profiles filled out? Will you be on time to auditions? Are you going to be networking, creating your own content? Are you going to be doing casting director workshops and building your relationships with industry people? If you're not doing all those things for us, we're not going to do much for you. Trust me. So just so you know. Um, Get to know and see their personality. This is really just see if you vibe, if you fit, if there's a good energy together. Because this is the person you're going to be talking to on the phone, you know, uh, getting information from. Is the communication clear? Uh, are you able to just understand each other? Or does it have a tension? You know, is it calm and relaxed and friendly? Um, don't be all about yourself. I know actors are narcissist narcissistic self-absorbed, insecure, self-centered, narcissistic people. And I am too. I mean, all actors are. Performers are. That's just what we are. It's part of why we do what we do. We are like that. However, a meeting with an agent is not the time to be your full-on narcissistic self, only talking about yourself, and bragging about bullshit. You know, it's, it's find out about them. Do they have a family? Why do they love their job? Ryan, is there any questions in here that you'd like people to ask you? Yeah, Jason just said 35% of the of the submissions suck. It's so true. Uh, let's see. You're going to stand out and wow them if you show them that you're hardworking in the business, that you're taking classes, and that you're curious about how to improve. You know, do they have any suggestions of classes they'd like to recommend you take? Uh, is there anything they think, looking at your package, that they think you could do that would help them uh, to get more auditions and help to get you out there? Show that you're interested in talking to them about business and being a team. Don't do it with any attitude or arrogance. After the meeting, follow up immediately with a thank you card and a thank you email if you like. A follow up with some kind of gift. You're welcome to do that. Um, sometimes agents get gifts, thank you gifts, like Starbucks cards or um, things like there's a lot of ideas of how to follow up with agents and managers and casting directors after they book you on projects or sign you that's in the winner's circle that talks about the appropriate things to do when gifting agents and managers or casting directors and what not to do because that can have really annoy people too so you got to know the right ways to do that um my one piece of advice is don't send anything edible you don't know what people like you don't know what their medical preferences are or considerations or allergies so don't send alcohol you know i know people will say yeah send alcohol but you don't know if they drink just don't do all that don't do anything that can melt Simple letter or postcard with a small Amazon gift card. That's always a safe gift. And you don't have to gift agents and managers for meeting with you. But there are people out there who like to do that. I had a client once that gifted me constantly with stuff. I mean, I don't. I, I re-gifted half of it because I don't need it. But uh, that's just how she says thank you for everything. I couldn't stop her. Every time I'd say stop that, she'd like, oh, no, 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 no. You have to accept. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I've given you pretty much the outline of what to do and not to do. If I did not cover anything you wanted to know, I will take some time to answer questions. Uh, if there's anything that any agent or manager has, has been watching, wants to say or add, please do so. I will repeat it out loud so that every actor watching this can hear it. Groovy? All right. Uh, so this was day five of uh, five steps to level up your acting career. And there's just too much to pack into one freaking coaching call like this it is too much there's so much more information i go into so much more detail on all of these topics and more in the winner's circle and if you're serious about making acting your career i highly suggest you join us in the winner's circle because we're going to demystify hollywood we're going to demystify all the steps you have to take and give you every single trick in the book literally i'm going to give you every trick in the book that will help you get past all of the people who don't know what they're doing and get you a great agent, get you great materials, turn you from green to gold. Come on, let's do that. Um, you can join the Hollywood Winner's Circle by going to hollywoodwinnerscircle.com slash academy. hollywoodwinnerscircle.com slash academy. There's a link at the top. Now let's get to those questions. Because this is my favorite part. Let's just look at the questions, eh? All right, I'll go back. How do you, oh, you can't scroll back up, okay. What advice would you give for pilot season preparation then? That's not a real question, people. Got to have questions that actually make sense. Have you got advice for once you've signed with an agent, please? Like what kind of advice? Like show up to your auditions on time. Be early. 
create your own content and get to get eyes on your projects do publicity on your projects a lot of times people book a co-star and they don't do anything to get publicity for that they just book the co-star and they announce it on Facebook man you better get on the phone and call uh, no, lo local newspapers in your home state your hometown your home city start getting press written up about you Re release press releases to the Associated Press there's there's a lot of things you can do to get publicity for your projects and the time to do that is when you have something to talk about there's a lot I can tell you about what to do of advice of what to do when you have an agent but you need to get into the course and do that I'm not gonna spend my time doing that right now I David Rosenblatt talent manager extraordinaire once you get a talent agent, what is the next steps after that? Keep working through them? I, mean, I don't understand the question. When you get a talent agent, the next steps, keep working through them? I don't even know what that means. All right, much love from Washington. You're welcome. You're welcome, Ron. Uh, let's see, questions. For teens, there aren't many casting workshops for my age in my area. I understand. So be resourceful. Go to your acting school. Tell your acting teacher you want to bring in a casting director from LA or like someone like if you're a teen you want to bring in someone like um, Howard um, Meltzer or Suzanne Goddard Smythe or Barbie Block or Krista Bull Krisha Bullock or Jamie Jamie Snow and ask if you can bring Jamie Snow into the school and the school and that you're gonna let the school put on a workshop for Jamie Snow and you charge whatever hundred dollars hundred fifty dollars uh, for the day for all of the kids that sign up and then you use that money to fly Jamie Snow in to do the workshop and put her in a hotel and fly her back get to know the casting directors just because you're not in the town that we are in doesn't mean you can't bring them to your town you got to be resourceful in this business should I write a cover letter that I'm not a US citizen that's important should I write in the cover letter that I'm not a non-US citizen well you have to if you're not a US citizen you have to write you're not a US citizen you also have to write if you're on a green card uh, don't think about paragraphs how many paragraphs it could be loco Julian it's it's as many paragraphs as it takes I want to see that someone can promote a film with their personality when I meet them good point Ryan when you book a film and you get asked to go on talk shows or do interviews when the movie is out it's about your personality being able to you know have stories uh, have information to share I suggest if you're going into a meeting with an agent or manager you already have a story a great story that you can tell a couple great jokes if you want but we don't want to see blah, 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 blah. you know you gotta have energy and life and be able to tell a good story it's so important Ask an agent how you can make their life easier as a talent. Sure, you could ask that. What if your type is bad, bouncer, bad guy? How do you be friendly? Be friendly. Be friendly. Just because you look like a bouncer doesn't mean you're going to go in there and be all mean and, and rude. Be friendly. Your headshots should clearly show that you have that mean side as a bouncer. Your size is going to show it, obviously. Um, your clips should show it. So you just be a nice guy. Nobody wants to deal with a jerk. Uh, you're welcome. I always keep it real. Though I'm saying. All right, let me see if there's any questions. As a parent of an infant, as an infant, why are you? I don't even understand. I don't support parents getting their infants into show business. I think it's a ridiculous waste of time. If you're trying to get your infant into the business, it probably means you want to be in the business. So my suggestion is, uh, and this might not be a popular answer, but I don't really care. I'm not. I'm not interested in being popular. I'm not interested in being liked. I'm interested in telling the truth and helping actors get ahead in their career that's it and if you don't like my answers I don't really care <laughs> but what I'm gonna say is your child's an infant really why aren't you just breastfeeding them and walking them in the park I don't see any reason why a parent needs to put their infant in show business seriously you probably want to be in show business and you never did it and now you want your infant to do it why don't you this is from my this is from my heart take some acting classes take some acting classes do some student films and get yourself in front of the camera where obviously you want to be and don't put it on your kid 
but if I was going to answer that question, which, which I'm really not going to, I don't think, you know, as a parent, you take pictures weekly and update them. What else can you do to be on top of things? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Send your pictures to uh, casting notices to see if they want to select your baby out of 10 million babies to be the cover of Huggies. You know, or why don't you just go home and enjoy being a mommy with your baby? I just don't, I'm not, I'm not big on moms and babies in this business. Sorry. You could ask somebody else for that. They might have a much more excited answer for you, but that's my answer. What if your type is cop, bad guy? Okay, we already seen that. Um, uh, let's see. You're welcome, everybody. Stop seeking advice from inexperienced actors. Oh, my God. Yes, Jason, an agent here in the group. Stop seeking advice for inexperienced actors. From the inexperienced actors who have never been on television are not serious regulars, do not regularly star as guest stars and co-stars, should be the last person you're listening to. There's groups on this uh, on Facebook where there's actors giving advice to actors. Oh my God, stay away from those groups. Those actors can't give you advice if they aren't doing it. Um, let's see what else. As a younger beginner actress, how do I make myself intriguing and appealing in a cover letter? I've done all the work. I've got a pretty good package prepared. It's intriguing. I don't know. Be yourself. It it should be intriguing. If you're intriguing, it it will be. You know. Um, be yourself. Talk about the work that you've accomplished and the things that you've booked. Talk about, uh, you know, make sure you have links to really good acting clips. And as a young beginner actress, be producing your own content. We are interested in people that produce their own content. If you haven't noticed that, the business has changed. We now are interested in people that can get viral videos on their own on YouTube or Instagram or create their own content or they create their own short films or, or they're creating their own reels and clips. People that are taking proactive action. Abil availability check. Is that the same as being pinned? No, it's just availability check. Um, if you have an agent, when's a good time to get a manager? There's no right time for any of this stuff. You know, sometimes you'll get a manager before you get an agent, sometimes an agent before a manager. Um, what you want is someone who's excited about you and can't wait to, and is excited to be on your team. What are you looking for? An agent or manager that is over the moon, excited and ecstatic about you. They know where you fit in the business. They tell you the types of shows you fit on. Uh, they are, they're instrumental in helping you um, understand the business and where you fit in it. That's really important. Because a lot, of, a lot of times people go into an agent's office and say, I can play anything. You can't. You've got to know your type and where you fit in. And your agent needs to know it too. Would you put a TV movie under film in order to keep with the guidelines? I don't really think it matters right now. We're all confused about that kind of thing because TV movies are now, movies are now on Netflix. Is that a web series? Is that, is that new media or is that a film? Is it television? I don't know. If it was a film, put it under film. If you want to put it under new media... Put it under new media. Uh, I don't know. You know, if it was a film, put it under film and write Netflix in parentheses. You can do that too, I guess. If you have an agent who's not sending you out, you don't know that they're not sending you out. Let me tell you, that's a very common mistake that new actors say all the time. My agent's not sending me out. You don't know that at all. Your agent could be submitting you every day and you're not getting called in. You are not getting called in. Um, if you have an agent who's not sending you out, do you leave their name or name with another agent? When asked why you're switching, what is a gracious answer? A gracious answer is it just wasn't a fit. Never bad mouth the agent, because I promise you we all know each other. We go to events together, we go to conferences together, we go to showcases, workshops, meetings, we have mutual friends, our kids are signed to the agent that you uh, don't like, etc. It's a small, tight knit community. So don't badmouth any agent when you leave or any manager. If you And that's another thing. In a meeting, don't sit down and start saying, oh, my God, my other agent never got me out. And they were just so bad. They just never bogle luck. Oh, my God, we, if you're doing that to your agent, we know you'll do that to us in the next meeting. So we will never hire you, never sign you. Don't do that. Be gracious. It was a great, uh, it was great, but just after a while, it just wasn't a fit. Leave it at that. But 
before you go running around trying to get a different agent because your agent isn't sending you out, it's probably your materials. So make sure that you're giving them the best headshots and a variety of them that you have 10 different headshots up on Actors Access in LA Casting or Casting Network that you have seven or eight different clips showing different personalities, moves, attitudes, etc. And make sure that your resume is completely filled out and all your special skills are filled out. And that you're hustling with casting director workshops and you're creating your own content. And if after giving them all of that to work with, they're not getting you auditions, then consider moving on. Uh, but before you move on, I would set up a meeting with them to go over everything, look at your submission report, and see what's going on. Should an aspiring actor move to New York or LA before getting an agent? Or get experience in their area first? Should an aspiring actor move to New York or LA before getting an agent? Well, I think you've got to get experience where you are first. I mean, why would you try to come to LA or New York to get an agent if you haven't done theater yet and short films in your own community? You're going to come into LA where the most well-trained, uh, most experienced in, actors in the world live, and you're going to compete with them. Sounds ridiculous. Get experience in your own state first. That's why I wrote that book, How to Be a Star Right Where You Are, period. When I say star, I don't mean famous. It's just a catchy phrase, how to be a star right where you are, star, R, rhyme, that's it. What it's about is how to get experience working in your own state before you try to get with an agent or manager because they have thousands of people to choose from and you need to build your resume where you live. If you can't build it where you live, how the hell are you going to build it in Los Angeles? Um, how do you let them know you understand your type without appearing pitiful and not confident? Uh, you mean if you're butt ugly, and I'm not saying you are because your post does not have, it actually has a picture of a snowman, so I don't know idea what you look like, but if someone's butt ugly, how do you make them not feel sorry for you? Uh, listen, you can't control how other people feel in life, but you can say, I play character types. I play the, uh, the ugly wife. I play the bully. I play the person that's bullied. I mean, we can see looking at someone whether they're attractive or not, or Hollywood standard pretty or not, whatever that is. You know, we, when you go to a, an interview where they're looking for a, a drop dead gorgeous female or male, you're going to be in a room full of the most beautiful people on earth. Some of the most beautiful people on earth. And if you're butt ugly walking next to them, we're going to tell the difference. I mean, know what your type is. It's not a mystery. Don't worry about, don't worry about that. Can you use a reference letter from a director on a network show? Sure, why not? Uh, some people will think that's nice. Some people won't give a shit. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to include it, I suppose. You're welcome for the helpful information. Talking about management specifically. When interviewing, how do we approach the question of how to attack career development and growth? I don't know what you mean by approach the question. Just ask your questions. So instead of saying, what are you going to do for me? You know, how, how, are, how are we going to do, what's our plan of attack going to be? Well, you got to know your plan of attack. Uh, you know, ask if they pitch. Ask if they pick up the phone and pitch and when they pitch. Ask when they pitch. That will be helpful. Because uh, not all agents pitch on everything. And not all managers pitch on everything. Some agents pitch when you're absolutely right for the project. Some agents pitch when they know that you could do this job and that the casting should absolutely see you. And others pitch in the notes section. So figure out if they pitch. I think that's important. I was wondering if this, if you're looking for a theatrical but already have a commercial, if you have them listed on the resume while looking. Yes. All right. Let's see. Biker, big bikers are usually kitty cats. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else I can tell you. Right, Ryan? The infant answer. I think that woman gave me a whole bunch of little angry faces. I don't care. It's just don't put your babies in this business. It's so stupid. And also there's so little roles for babies in TV and film. There's none hardly. And they only want twins. So if you have twins, um, and only a few babies are on. There's only a few products that have babies on them. That's why we don't have a lot of agents that represent babies. We don't have a lot of infant departments. There's only a handful. Um... I'm producing and starring in a movie that's never been done before. 
you think it'll be easy to get distribution? Who knows? You'll see. You'll see. Do we send the cover letter as a PDF or just write it on the email? To put it in the email. Uh huh. Do we submit headshots as an attachment with the original size? No, reduce those things. Do you know any actor groups for support actors that are friends of Bill? Scott, uh, I don't. Recreate, regarding creating your own content, I'm looking to create my own web series, but want to make sure it's quality enough. Would creating one with a Canon Rebel, I don't know. If you want to be taken seriously, make sure your material, my nose doctor, did you? you know that. If you want to be taken seriously, make sure that your, your materials are the highest quality production you could possibly get. I will tell you, uh, based on, you know, from all five of these days of, of five steps to level up, there's no place where you should skim. There's no place where your material should not be top notch. There's no place where there should be mistakes. Everything that you do that is less than par makes you look like an amateur and makes you look green. So everything has to be professional looking, professional sounding professional videos, professional resume, everything needs to be at the highest level. You cannot ever get anywhere in this business by having the thought, well, I'll just send them something. It's better than nothing. It's not better than nothing. Great is great and bad is bad. Or as my grandpa used to say, right is right and wrong ain't nobody. God bless him. Right is right and wrong ain't nobody. Either do things right or don't do them at all. I think your parents have said that to you probably before. But li literally, nothing gets actors tossed to the side faster than poor quality materials. So there's never a time when poor quality materials are okay. Well, I'll just put that in for now because that's all I have. It's a video of me, but the sound wasn't very good, but I'll just put that in, that's all they have. And or I'm, here's this film I got back, there is no sound, but that's okay, they'll see my acting. No, 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 no. A pr impression is an impression. You don't think Coca-Cola got good by just putting out some average soda that maybe is, yeah, sometimes the formula is good, sometimes it's not, not consistent. Eh, no. Just put something out in the can. No, it's got to be great. 137 comments. Not sure I'm going to get to these. I can tell you that if you want more in-depth information and you really want to get deep into how this business works so that you really know how to get ahead in it, get into the Hollywood Winter Circle where all that information is. There's a reason I put it all in there for you is so that you'll get ahead so that you won't be green and so that you can actually get the attention and the respect of agents and managers and casting directors so that you can actually get opportunities to get those jobs so you can actually be on set and have your honey wagon and be on set and, and be working with actors that you respect and, and have films in the theater so that it's not just a dream but it's a reality. But in order to go from the dream to the reality, you've got to really know the business. Otherwise, you don't get there. So how important is it to you really? Is it good to build relationships with the student directors? Because yes, of course it's good to build relationships with student directors. I always ask the follow-up, why didn't they get you out? How often did you go out? If you say once in three months, I'll agree and get it immediately. If you say you were going out twice a week and it wasn't enough, I might tell you to shut up and stay with your prior agent, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Obviously, if they're there six months and didn't get out, if, if it's not their package, which most likely it is, it could be a shitty agent, right? Um, but if you're getting out twice a week and you're getting opportunities, you're getting out. Should I put student TV series on my resume under television section? That's a good one. I don't know. A student TV series. Well, it's probably going to be uh, released as new media, right? Just because it's called a TV series doesn't mean it was on TV. I would put it under new media. Will it be a good idea to do lots of self-tapes and put it on YouTube? If they're really, really good, you could do a bunch of self-tapes, but get coached first and make sure that the, the work is exceptional. What's a respectable thing to say if I'm getting back in the business? I'm getting back into the business. I just had my children. Listen, we are not stupid. Some people uh, had children. They got married. They ran a business. We can tell if you're 40 or 50 coming back in the business that you, you know, it's not, a, it's not a mystery. Be honest. Let's see. Uh, how you got to link the link to buy my book. Anything you want, look up Wendy Elaine Wright. Google it. Wendy Elaine Wright books. Google them. I'm not going to give you all the links to everything. 
sorry, you guys, but I mean, I, 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 as much as I want you to have that material, you guys got to do some of the work on your own. Google is your friend. Type in my name. It comes up on Amazon. It'll come up with my, on my website. Do agents and managers welcome new but talented actors, despite the lack of experience in the industry? Uh, no, we don't welcome talented actors without experience in the industry. No, no. Lack of experience means hell no, unless you're a kid, like I said before. Get experience. Okay, well, how? Because it's not the same business it was 10 years ago. You have an iPhone. You can shoot an entire movie on it. You can hire production companies. You can shoot short films. Enter them into film festivals. Get the best acting training from wherever you live in the world. You can Skype coach with top LA acting teachers, New York acting teachers. There's no reason that you can't get great training from wherever you are or create great content or get experience. Lack of experience is an excuse. It's a lazy actor. And no, we're not interested in lazy actors. I'm currently taking acting classes in the moment. I don't have headshots yet. Uh, that has no question attached for me. Sometimes they say they're looking for a specific, specific age range. Is it okay to submit if you're older? Then, yeah. Sometimes they say they're looking for a specific age range, but if you fit a type they might need and they're blown away by your clips and they like the fact that, that you've had the training and the experience that you've had, they may still call you in for a meeting. Is it okay to submit a screenplay to a casting director or director after an audition? Hell no. Don't give the casting director anything after your audition. That's just going to show them that you're green and you don't know what you're doing. You don't know the etiquette or the protocol of auditions. And they, that, you're, that, you're just, that they just will not ever call you in again. Trust me. Okay. If you want to submit to a director, get in touch with that director personally on Facebook, on Instagram, through their agent their manager, and go through the right channels, through an agent, through an attorney, go through the right channels. Maybe you meet them at a party, get their contact information, stay in touch with them. Does commercial work hurt an actor if they want to work a good big, no. Commercial work never hurts an actor, ever. Um, right is right and wrong ain't nobody. That's right. Grandpa Charles right. What's the best solution in finding internships? Call them and ask. If you're being considered for auditions without an agent, does that mean your package is good quality? Perhaps, yeah. If you're being considered for auditions without an agent and you go to close it, get an attorney to look over the contract and make sure that you are closing on something that's good. Or you want to get an agent, that's a great time to reach out to agents. If you've been offered a job, that's another big secret of mine I almost forgot to tell you. So many secrets of mine are in the Hollywood Winter Circle. I can't even remember half of them, but I'm giving you the basic things, like the, like the beginner level stuff. Because um, if you want the real stuff, you're going to pay for it, right? I mean, come on now. So if you really want to go deep and you really want to understand how this business works, you're going to pay to get in that kind of knowledge. I'm giving you the basics. It goes much deeper than what I'm giving you. In fact, I'll, I'll say that, that one for people that take my course. Do you think people who have accents, English as a second language, they will always be behind everyone else in this business? I think English as a second language, people with accents are not what most stories are about. So anytime you're auditioning for projects that have Americans with a, a regional American accent in it that are not immigrants, they're always going to require an American accent. But that's why Australians have the American accent and, and, and New Zealanders and uh, British and Scottish. Those actors are very well trained and they have an American uh, dialect. You better get that if that's what you want to do. Thanks so much for doing this. You're welcome. If a casting director has frequently brought you in to audition for roles on a network show and you haven't booked it yet, is it worth including that fact in the cover letter? Or will someone read that as this the actor always comes up short? Both. They're going to see that they're, that they're always bringing you in. Just don't say they brought me in 20 times that I never booked. Just say, you know, um, I'm a so-and-so brings me in all the time. But in terms of what you need to do, you need to get some booking coaching with Amy Linden and figure out how to book or fly to New York and take James Sassone's show up to book the role class and go there for two weeks and go take the course, you know, or go fly in two days and then fly back in for two days. Figure out what you need to do. Go to Amy Linden. Uh, Amy Linden has something called the Actors Toolbox online. 
And I recommend this because, like I said, there's no reason on earth you can't have top-level training from wherever you are in the world. She's recorded like 100 videos and 80 lectures and all kinds of stuff teaching you the 15 steps she has to break down a script and book the job. So pay that 15 bucks a month that it is for her toolbox and watch those videos night and day until you know how to apply that to any script. And that will make you so much better as an auditioner. Then maybe you'll book them. But it's not uncommon to get called back in many, many times from the same casting director. And, 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 and you won't book it all the time, you know. That's just the nature of the beast. But you're in the mix. Good, good, good. I think this journey is always greater than the destination. It really needs to be, Michael Ray. This journey, because when you get to the destination, you're going to feel like, oh, it's not what I thought it was. There'll be some good things, but there'll be other things. And you're just going to set a new destination anyway. So you might as well enjoy the destination. Dan Shane, our casting director, welcome to the party. I'm on day five of my five steps or pillars to getting a, to a level up your acting career. Five steps to level up your acting career. 163 comments. Okay, you know what? I'm doing a follow-up question and answer on Monday and then one next Friday. So I'll be happy to answer a lot of questions then. Write your questions down over the weekend. I'll try to answer a few more of these. And let me just pause to have my... Medifast. Medifast. I found out about this. It's got, it's like you have it in place of a meal. You do Medifast in the morning, Medifast at lunch, and at dinner you have a salad with chicken, blue cheese dressing, blue cheese crumbles, whatever you're going to get. It's, it's really like avoid carbs. And the carbs that they have, the potatoes that they make, and the soup that they have and stuff are all high in protein. Uh, I think they changed it somehow, <laughs> scientifically, they changed the food so that it's high in protein and very, very low in carbs. And you just drop weight like that. And I'm not being paid, nor am I endorsing it. It just works for me. And I love it. And plus, it's so chocolatey. Mmm. My God. Thank God they have that and it's so chocolatey or else it wouldn't. Hold on one second. My actor that's auditioning for... Um... For Marvel on Monday, Gloria or Giovanni Espiritu. Giovanni Espiritu, I would say, go with her as a coach. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. What, where was I? Questions. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to share. I auditioned for a small role, but I was off book. They emailed me and advised me, although I auditioned for a small role, they'd like to offer me the lead instead. I owe it to my training this year. Congratulations. Hi, Reggie. How, what about representation for a 10-year-old boy? He's done extra work. We're showing it. No one cares about extra work. That's fine. This is you not understanding the business. That's another thing. Don't put in your cover letter. We've done extra work. It shows that you're an amateur. Right then and there. You just told us you're an amateur. So um, I'm just telling you, just letting you know. It's not an insult. Nothing I'm saying is to insult you. I'm just telling you the facts. Facts, facts, facts. Um, or my personal opinion, which never comes from insults. It's, it's from my heart. It's what I genuinely care and believe. So, but extra work, who cares? Who, who cares if he's done extra work? What we want to know is, has he done theater? Has he been in plays in his school? Is he taking acting classes? He's 10 years old. Those 10-year-olds in Hollywood have business cards, a website, and they, they, they're they little professionals. So that's who he's competing with. Has he done any short films or student films in whatever state you live in? Thank you for doing these webinars. You're welcome. I stepped away for a while to uh, for caring for your mom, and now you're back. That's fine. People do that. Listen, when, you're, when, you, when you have parents, they age and get sick or things you have to... This is great. You're just tell them the truth. Just tell them the truth. <laughs> okay, no secret today. I'll look it up. I'm signed with you, Winter Circle. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. That's why. 
the videos are there everything's in it and in the PDF that goes with the videos oh my god I give you so much information and so many resources and so much guidance and help that you cannot be lost ever again you cannot be lost in this business anyone who's talking to you after you've done my course and you've done it I don't mean you got the course and it sat on your desktop and you did nothing I'm talking about you did the work they're gonna hear by the way you speak that you're no longer green they're gonna hear that you know what you're talking about what you're doing so do all the videos and then you're gonna go back into that course over and over and over when new things come up that you didn't it wasn't applicable then it becomes applicable you're like oh my god that's in video blah blah and you're gonna go back there take notes it's so great and you're gonna need it because I told you someday I'm not gonna continue you know I'm gonna go do my own thing like start an orphanage in Peru where I can actually help little children that have no family no parents and do something on the ground to help people suffering and starving or dying or in need so that's why the course is there so that when I go do something else people you still have it my team will always update it to make sure it's updated with new materials and I'll always come back to update videos and things like that but I'm not gonna be in here every day helping you guys I have other goals and one of them is to open an orphanage so that's gonna take priority over this at some point if an agency oh my god I get excited that's so exciting it's like my next phase of my life okay but right now I'm in this phase and I'm enjoying it if an agency or manager offers you a contract to represent you how much time is reasonable to look over it you can take it for the night and you can go have it looked at by an attorney uh, you don't need to sign it right then and there if you don't want to you can tell them you want to think about it there's no reason that nobody has to pressure you with anything you might have other meetings that's fine have your other meetings uh, if you like sweet dressings on salad just put on rice vinegar oh I didn't know that I'll try that out rice wine vinegar is the wine cooked out of it because you know I can't drink anything is talent is training classes experience no training is training experience is acting in front of the camera in a short film a student film a web series or on stage in the theater a non-union film a TV project a commercial PSA industrial that's experience training is classes is that Italian Giovanni Espiritu I don't know what it is but I freaking love that name should I put theater multitude on my resume I don't know what that means but if you've got a lot of theater put half of it there and then write partial list after the heading of theater 192 comments peace on earth is there a time frame you have to access the winner circle after you sign up listen once you I'm glad you're asking questions about the winner circle because we're educating people about it you know it's it's a new thing that came out last year it's changing people's lives uh, it's 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 changed the whole business honestly so it's important that you ask questions about it because it uh, you know the goal is that every single actor whoever wants to be an actor will take the course and then you'll have the right information and you won't have to waste six, seven years trying to figure out shit on your own. And you know what to do. Package from the first time, it's going to be the right headshots and the right uh, materials and the right resume. And when you reach out to agents and managers, there, you'll be a professional reaching out to another professional instead of a wannabe that's green. And that's that should be the goal of any actor if you're reaching out to go to the next level to have all your ducks in a row. So the course gets your ducks in a row, and then you'll be treated like a professional with respect. And that's what this is all about. So there is no time frame. You know, once you have the course, you have it for life. You you can access it every single day of your life. You know, the course is set up in a way where you can go through the videos and then you'd look at the PDF that's attached and look at the steps it says to do and take do those steps one at a time. Some you'll do first, some you'll do others. You'll go back to that video, you'll do this, you'll do that. Watch all the videos at once, binge watch if you want. Go back and watch them, decide to watch one a week and do what it says. You can take the course any way you want to. We have questions at Facebook group where I'm in there every week answering questions. So, and my whole team is in there answering questions. There's a ton of us answering questions. So, we're happy to, to help you. Giovanni Espiritu, I need you, to, I'm gonna text you right now. Giovanni, I need you to coach my client that's got an audition for a Marvel movie on Monday. Um, Mom is going to reach out to you, okay? Um, I'm going to give you Mom's number right now so that, oops, so that you have it. Sorry, people, I'm going to do a little business right here because this is important to me. 
So Giovanni, I am sending you um, the mom's phone number. Don't mention this publicly. We, you know, for Marvel movies, we're not allowed to um, mention anything whatsoever. There you go. Please call the mom. She she needs the coach, and she was just asking me who, and I just told her you. All right. Uh, I've worked with Giovanni in a film. Isn't she great? Oh, my gosh, she's awesome. Wendy, I'm like the godmother you always wanted. Thank you. Um, well, that, with an agency that has many agents that interest you, do you address? Do you say all agents? Okay, good question. So pick an agent. Don't just um, send it to all agents. And also don't email every single agent at the agency. Just, just one. I have to make a lot of money for an orphanage. Worked in one for a month. Well, uh, you know, that's why we do what we're doing here. Casey, I'm live. Hold on a minute. Okay. Uh, interesting question. I assumed it would be cooked out. I don't know. What about actors who refuse to pay, play gay or fee, feel a character isn't them? Okay. When you're working with an agent, when you're working with an agent, Listen, if they refuse to play gay, I mean, you can't force people to play gay, Jason. They, 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 you know, they don't have to play gay if they don't want to play gay, but you're an actor. You should be able to play every kind of, all different kinds of roles that you're right for. If you're really right for a gay role, you should freaking get over that <laughs> and play it. But if it's, if it's, if it's, if you just can't bring yourself to, then you just can't find an actor that can, you know? I think actors have to decide for themselves what they want to play and don't want to play. I don't have to force an actor to play something they don't want to play. Um, but I do think that if you want to be in this business, you should be a professional. And part of that means playing roles that you don't always feel that you are right for, that, that you feel. Because, you know, your job is to get into the feeling of another character and experience someone else's walking in someone else's shoes. And, and your job is to tell a story of what it's like to be that person. So if you're really an actor, um, you should be curious and want to know how to tell those different stories, you know, and, and gay shouldn't, it, it, some of the most amazing roles are roles that you don't feel you're right for. Some, sometimes people's best work is stuff they didn't think they'd be good in. So I think you should stretch yourself to play roles that you don't think you could play or roles that you might not feel comfortable playing. I think becoming an actor is all about being comfortable. I mean, not comfortable. Being uncomfortable, stretching past your comfort zone into places that are not comfortable is what I'm saying. So in that regard, Jason, I agree that age, that actors should be able to, you know, have compassion and play characters that maybe they never would play. I mean, I don't like serial killers. Does that mean I can't play a serial killer? I mean, you, you play roles of people that you're not. That's what actors do. So be a professional and do your job. But if you absolutely... Refuse to play gay, then that's your choice. But that seems to be a, a you problem that you might want to look into. I am a mentor for a lifetime. Thank you. You put I know you put Giovanni in a TV show this week. Woo woo! Ryan, and I love that you represent her. She is with the right agent. Oh god, 208 new comments. Holy shit on a stick. I don't think I can get to all these. So yeah. Going outside the box, exactly. Okay, so I think I'm gonna... Okay, so when you say, oh, this isn't me, this isn't me, give it a shot. You don't know if it isn't you. First of all, it isn't you because you are playing another character. It's the character, and your job is to play the character. So put that character on and see how you play it. Uh, anything else? I'm gonna go in a minute. Are there any other... Pressing questions about getting an agent, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm going to go. So that 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 wraps up my uh, conversation for today. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do. So um, what I'll say is uh, we're going to be doing another question and answer on Monday. It's a follow-up question and answer. So you go through the course that I just did, this live webinar series for five days. And if you have any questions, things that come up that you that you uh, would like to have answered since watching the videos, write them down and you can ask me. I'll do a, a follow-up. Um, check out the HollywoodWinnerCircle.com slash academy. Uh, if you want to become a professional actor in the fastest way possible, that is the fastest way. 
No hands, no holes barred. That's the fastest way. I highly recommend you join it. It's the only comprehensive business course out there. And you'll get exclusive access to me in the inner circle where I will be your mentor and help you through the course as needed. I'm there to answer questions. This has been super fun. I love answering questions. I hope you had a good time. It's been a pleasure to spend the week with you. Guys. And I hope you have a great weekend. I will talk to you another time. God bless you. Don't let anybody get in your way of your dreams. Get rid of all the naysayers around you. Don't get in your way, especially yourself. Be your own best friend and believe in yourself. You can do it. See you later.